This is the Schmo with the pro, with the future Hall of Famer, the champ champ of the heavy hitters, the only one in the UFC, the pivotal face of the television broadcast, Daniel Cormier in the flesh, Fight Island, how we doing? I'm doing good, man. I love these interviews. These are the best. We appreciate that. Now, did the snacks on the Etihad airplane live up to the hype? They were good. I mean, they were good. I snacked the entire time. Got a lot of sleep, but just such a long flight. This is not something I look forward to doing over and over again. I saw you here back in the U.S. and then back. I don't know how you're choosing to go home in between. It's brave. I, I don't think I can handle it. When duty calls. Now, I don't have the white towel nearby, so we're just going to have to brace ourselves here. Let's start off with this. Your buddy, your teammate, Habib Narmagomedov, mm -hmm. if he gets the job done that you anticipate at UFC 254, there's a lot of talk with the super fight with GSP. Mm -hmm. GSP's gone on record stating that going down to 155, especially at this point in his age, his career, it might be tough. Would you like to see that super fight at 165 pounds? I think that is the fight that you finally do a catch weight right everybody's talked about 165 165 if you got George St. Pierre willing to come down five pounds from uh, welterweight where he was the champ for a long time to fight Habib who doesn't have to suck himself all the way down to 55 and fight at 165 that can be justified especially if Habib says I'm done at 30 fights I'm 29 and 0 I want to fight the guy who's considered the greatest of all time. I think you make that fight happen. It does not matter. Look, the weight, the weight, the belts, all that stuff's kind of irrelevant when you put those two types of guys together uh, in a fight. So no matter what it takes, Dana, boss, no matter what it takes, if these guys are willing to fight each other, please, for not only just me, but the fans around the world, make it happen. I know you like to give us what we want. Make that fight happen. Hey, if anybody has pull with the boss, man, it's you, DC. <laughs> now let's move on to John Jones. What's more likely to happen first? John Jones fights someone at heavyweight or he fights Israel Adesanya at light heavyweight? I think Jones fights at heavyweight first. And it will not be by his choosing. I think it's because of Adesanya. I think Adesanya will not fight him yet because he feels there's unfinished business at 185 pounds. Now, if he didn't care, if they back up the Briggs truck... To his house, it may change. But the reality is, Izzy makes 185. He makes it effectively, and he fights great at the weight class. I think you'll see him try and defend his title a few more times before he starts playing around with super fights. But here again, I believe that when the super fight does happen, it does not happen at 205. It happens between the 210 and 215 range, whereas John doesn't have to come all the way down to 205 for a championship weight fight with no belt on the line. And Izzy doesn't have to, because Izzy doesn't weigh 205. He's a little bigger, right? So it won't be as much of a, a, a weight difference for him. But Jones will have to cut some. But there's, that's going to be another one of those catchweight fights, I believe. Another catchweight. Now let's move on to Aljamain Sterling. What's your hypothesis as to why he hasn't been announced for that title fight against Pewter Jan? Well, I don't know. But I think after last weekend with Corey Sanhagen's performance, he will get that call soon, right? Because on Saturday, Sanhagen got the job done and really put himself back in the running. But the reality is Aljo, by staying home, truly became a clear number one contender, right? Because you can't have Sanhagen jump him. And now um, Marlon Marais is out of the way. Marlon Marais was the guy that had beat Aljo. Marlon Marais was the guy that was scary. And if he beat Sanhagen in the way that Aljo did, he would have been justifiable. But now there is no one else. It has to be Aljo. And I believe that that announcement will come very soon now that the, the murky waters have kind of started to clear up a little bit. What's the deal with Leon Edwards? If you're Leon Edwards, who do you fight next? What are you waiting for? I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know who he fights next because I don't know what makes sense for Rocky, right? Rocky is a good fighter. It's been a long time, though, right? And the longer it is, the more people tend to move on. You know, this game, this game because there are fights every weekend, this game goes with the next guy, right? So for as big a deal as Corey Sanhagen was last Saturday, after Saturday... We're going to move on to the next guy, especially if Korean Zombie or Brian Ortega, two big-name guys, are more impressive, right? This game moves very fast. So for Leon Edwards, he's got to get himself in there soon. 
He's not having any luck getting Masvidal in there. Masvidal's going to fight Covington. Those guys are matched up. He's going to have to fight somebody behind him a little bit in order to just reestablish himself and let people remember, hey, I've won eight fights in a row. He already said no to the number five guy in Wonderboy. Yeah, that's crazy. Why wouldn't he fight Wonderboy? I think that's the one, right? You fight Wonderboy or you start to go back because, again, everybody's – the number one contender in Gilbert Burns has the champ, Right. The number two guy in Kobe Covington has Jorge Masvidal, who's like three or four. Now you're starting to, or Leon's number three, but now Masvidal's like four. Wonder Boy's five. So who's left? You start getting back into the guys like Neil Magny, right? Who is a very dangerous fight, but a guy that's on the run himself. I mean, there's some interesting matchups, but Leon has to decide and go and fight someone because it's very clear now that it's going to take another victory. The Schmo heard you say the names Ortega Zombie. It's this Saturday. The winner of this fight Saturday evening, they're in the catbird seat, what'd you say to get the title shot against Volkanovsky? I think I think more for the Korean zombie. Okay. Right? Because we haven't seen Ortega for a while. He lost to Max Holloway in the title fight in his last fight. Um and you got some contenders, right? You got contenders. You have uh, you have uh, Zabit Ma no, Magomed Sharipov, Sharipov. You have uh, Max Holloway, who's still in there after the last fight with with, with Volkanovski. That was Yair like, Rodriguez. Yair Rodriguez. You have Calvin Cater now, who's looked phenomenal. You have a great. This is a great division. But when you look at the Korean Zombie and what he did last year, two finishes, very quick. And if he can beat Brian Ortega, who's number one ranked in the, in the division. I don't think you can deny this guy a title shot, especially with the following that he has. You Korean Zombie can go away for years and come back and be as big a star as he was when he left. So um he has he he hit he hits all the he checks all the boxes in terms of who you want fighting for the belt if he can get the job done. DC drop in knowledge will get you out of here on this one. You make your inevitable debut in the WWE. <laughs> what will be your ring name? Ah, I don't know. I mean, I would like to try something pretty creative, but at this point, my name has become so like uh I don't know. I don't want to sound like a jerk. You know, and say known, but I think you have to use the same name. So I don't get to play with it as much as I would have if nobody knew me. But because of the exposure I've had in the UFC, I think I got to kind of just go with Daniel Cormier. And that's a pretty boring name, but I get it. You know, maybe I'll steal your name. I'm not above stealing gimmicks. So maybe I'll steal your gimmick and start using it in the WWE. That could work. But <laughs> DC, DC Comics, you can play on that. Mm. He's the pro on the schmo on Fight Island. We're out.